Welcome to our lecture online. We have now seen a few examples of how to utilize the Hamiltonian in order to solve some simple mechanical problems. And we made use of two equations. The two equations are as follows, that the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to momentum was equal to Q dot, and the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to Q was equal to minus P dot. The question is, where do those come from? We need to be able to justify that. Well, in order to do so, we need to go back to our basic equation for the Hamiltonian, which is equal to the sum over all the dimensions in which the problem acts of the products of the momentum times Q dot. Remember, Q dot is the velocity in that direction, minus the Lagrangian. Remember that the Lagrangian is equal to the difference between the kinetic and the potential energy. And also realize that the Lagrangian is a function of Q and Q dot, where the Hamiltonian is a function or an equation, so to speak, of P and Q. Now also we need to remember that the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q in the dimension X, if we're dealing with a simple oscillator, the magnitude of that would be Kx, which is ma mv dot, which is equal to the momentum dot, P dot. And the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q dot, again, using the kinetic energy here, we get the derivative respect to velocity of 1 half mv squared, which is simply mv or p. All right, now that we have that, let's go ahead and go back to our basic equation. Now we're going to expand that because we're going to take the differential of the Hamiltonian. What happens when there's a small change in the Hamiltonian? Well, as long as we have more than one dimension, we're going to have the summation sign summing over all the dimensions. And then we have the what's inside the brackets. First of all, we have a product. So when we take the differential, we need to take the first times the differential of the second plus the second times the differential of the first minus the differential of the Lagrangian. Now, since the Lagrangian is a function of Q and Q dot, then notice we take negative of what's in here. That will be the change in the Lagrangian with respect to Q dot times the differential Q dot because when you cancel these out, you simply get the change in the Lagrangian with respect to Q dot. And then here we get the change in the Lagrangian with respect to Q. Of course, we have divided by Q dot times Q dot, I'm sorry, divided by delta Q times delta Q. When they cancel out, you simply end up with the change of the Lagrangian relative to Q dot and the change in the Lagrangian relative to Q. But we simply want the differential, not the derivative. Okay, notice that we're subtracting these two terms, so then you get a negative sign over here. Then we realize that the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q dot over here is equal to P, the momentum. So we replace this by the momentum. And here the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to, to Q, well, that gives us P dot. So we replace this by P dot. Hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Ooh, I was worried there about the negative sign, but I think we're good because notice the negative sign applies to both of these. I said, where did the negative come from? Because we take the magnitude of the change, and so that comes from this negative right here. So we're good on the negative signs. All right. Now, notice that this term right here and this term right here are identical, so they actually cancel out. So this term cancels out with this term. That leaves you with this term right here and this term right here. Now, notice that this is equal to the sum over all the dimensions, and that's then equal to the differential of the Hamiltonian, the change in the Hamiltonian, a small infinitesimal change in the Hamiltonian. But in general, we realize that the change in the Hamiltonian is simply, just like we did for the Lagrangian, it's the change in the Hamiltonian with respect to P, one of the variables, times delta P, plus the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to Q, times delta Q. Again, we want the differential of the Hamiltonian for the two variables in the Hamiltonian equation. Now we can realize that these two must be equal to one another, which means that the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to momentum is equal to Q dot, and the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to Q must be the negative P dot. And so that's why we get the partial of Hamiltonian with respect to P is Q dot, which is this right here, and the partial derivative with respect to Q must be negative P dot. And that's where those two equations came from, and that's why we can utilize those to come up with the equations of motion 
for whatever problem we're dealing with when we're using the Hamiltonian to solve the equation. And now we can go ahead and show you some more examples, which will come later because that's all I've prepared so far, but at least this is where we know why we can use the Hamiltonian the way we use it and where those two equations came from, so now we can feel good about using the Hamiltonian, although it's not as useful as the Lagrangian. So we'll see that in the videos to come. No, 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 they'll come, they'll come much quicker than that. I'll keep working on them. <laughs>